नमस्ते रमेश जी वेलकम टू अहिंसा कॉन्वर्सेशंस या नमस्ते रजनी नाइस टू सी यू आफ्टर लॉन्ग टाइम या एंड सो सच एन ऑनर टू हैव यू पार्ट ऑफ दिस सीरीज सो व्हाट वुड बी द अर्लीएस्ट रिकॉलेक्शन इन योर लाइफ मे बी फ्रॉम चाइल्डहुड ऑफ इदर द कांसेप्ट और द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ अहिंसा when i was probably in 7th or 8th standard there was a lesson in our book uh, satyagrahi ki kabhi haar nahi hoti that was the title uh, there was some shukla i don't remember the full name who had written it and uh, uh, i read it and i thought about it uh, how sat- uh, satyagrahi one who insists or uh, who continues on the path of truth how the person uh, doesn't get defeated so there are two things that i learned from that lesson that one that the path has to be non violent path and uh, one should not give up hope uh, hope uh, and stay on the path of truth and if one does not accept defeat is not scared not afraid uh then the person is always there with that truth and with the struggle so as long as the struggle continues uh the person is never defeated if one gives up the path that was the lesson i learned and the first experience that i had was in 1971 when i was in final year btech in iit and the plane was hijacked so when i was in final year btech in 71 Uh, there was a news going uh, that uh, indian plane was hijacked uh, and there was lot of unrest in among the students among my friends that something must be done some action must be there so we decided to make some placards and take a uh, procession to the ma- ma- march to the uh, pakistani high commission and the iit authorities got scared the dean came to meet me that don't go there will be violence there will be police lati charge and the uh, iit's name will get uh, spoiled so i said no we'll remain non violent and uh, we'll take police permission and uh, nothing will happen i had confidence that with non if we pilot if we get violent then there will be action but non violent protest is our right uh, so in spite of all that uh, uh means a uh, fear of among students that uh, uh dean uh, iit might expel them if there is some problem but we all went uh, uh there was another all went peacefully with police permission on the side of the road went to the pakistani high commission uh, placed our placards on the gate of the high commission and came back peacefully so that was the first experiment with uh, non violent action This is fascinating, uh, Ramesh ji, because you were growing up in a partition-affected family. I mean, you had grown up. Uh, yes. Did that in any way, uh, you know, affect your uh, approach to the issue of violence and non-violence? Because you could easily have grown up as a bitter person. Yes, as a child, uh, we heard all the stories. especially from the grandmother uh, uh, and other family members uh but because my father was a very stable person and he was an ethical doctor there was never an atmosphere of vengeance or hatred in our family mm. yes that's why Mixed up, our uh, ward boy at some place was a Muslim, so we mixed up with their family, ate their food. So there was never a, uh, an atmosphere of vengeance or hatred. And my grandfather was also a very satisfied person. He lost his family, but he didn't even file the claim that uh, whatever has happened is over. Now we have to start a new life. So that was the attitude. So I think that helped us. <laughs> so. Uh... how did you come to be involved in the jp movement what drew you to that whole both protest movement and the because it was also a very futuristic visionary mobilization right of young people longing for a total revolution that was a moral revolution how did you get drawn into this and what was that experience like 
Uh, 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 I did a job in industry for three years after BTEC. And uh, I was a project engineer and very uh, sitting next to the director of the company uh, in the next room. Uh, so what I saw in the company was, it was a very big company with a, almost uh, 17,000 staff. But I saw in that company that there is so much of corruption and so much of exploitation of labor. It means uh, that time I didn't know that uh, uh, this is structural violence. In factory, I saw a lot of corruption and I heard stories of a lot of violence by the company owners on the, when there was a labor strike. And uh, at the same time, uh, I also got to know when I used to go to Delhi, uh, meet my friends in, the, in JNU, in IIT, uh, that uh, JP movement has started. I used to read uh, news also that uh, in Bihar, the movement is going on and it will be all over India. It will start in uh, uh, Delhi also. So th that's when I decided enough is enough. Uh, uh, whatever I have studied, I will not uh, <laughs> contribute to the industry's profit and industry's corruption. And that's when I decided to join uh, IIT back uh, for MTech. And from uh, staying in the hostel, then I got involved in the JP movement. And right. that was the time when from Bihar movement and anti-corruption movement, JP gave a direction uh, towards total revolution. Yeah. Uh, so in the IIT also, we formed a group where we started discussing uh, uh, alternatives in health, alternatives in education, alternative uh, political systems, so all those discussions, we started calling people from uh, uh, different spheres. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got involved. Then on 6th March, uh, when there was a big march through the parliament, almost six, seven lakh people were there. So uh, with, with my group of friends in the, uh, IIT, about 20 of them, we also participated in that march from uh, Red Fort to the parliament. So there I could again see the strength of nonviolent struggle that six lakh people, seven lakh people marching from uh, 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 Red Ford to the parliament and not a single incidence of violence. Uh, so that was my involvement. And then at Ramlila Maidan, when JP gave the speech, when after which uh, uh, this was uh, emergency was declared, when JP gave a call, uh, people, uh, army and police is committed to the constitution and not to the government in power, not to the party in power or person in power. Uh, so in that meeting also, I was there. So partic uh, participation in the JP movement was uh, started when I went to IIT in MTech. Hmm. Yeah, today, and, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, please. Huh? No, then during emergency also, we did Satyagra and the underground newspapers, distribution and all that work was, meetings were going on. I also came in touch with Tarkunde Sahib that time. And that's in PUCL was formed, Citizens for Democracy was formed. Yeah. So I was in uh, present in those meetings also in the formation. I was part of the National Council. So that's how I got more and more involved. Yeah. And so the depth of understanding also grew. Yeah. Uh, today, yeah. <laughs> most people are not familiar with what JP meant by total revolution. So can I request you to, for the benefit of, say, people who are today under 25, if you could uh, briefly explain what was the vision of total revolution and inside that, what was the sp place of that famous slogan, Hamla chahe jaisa hoga, haath hamara nahi uthega. <laughs> it's all this was to uh, it was a training in non-violence because uh, one important part of uh, participation in a non-violent struggle is a training and that we saw later when we started working in uh, Chhatriwa Sangarshwain in Bombay. Uh, maybe we can talk about it a little later. Uh, but JP's uh, total revolution, what as we understood and we understand, is that uh, uh, 
whatever the way various systems are uh, developing in india at that time and even today it's getting worse uh, but it's not uh, for democracy they are not democratic so even education system needs to be changed where it's uh, for the people health system is uh, a doctor dependent it's a very uh, pro rich also and health information is not going to the people uh, access to poor people is not there so all these issues are there in the system and because of that uh, concept of total revolution and finding the uh, urge to find alternative systems that's how alternatives in healthcare also start develop with uh, dr role dr antia nangarwal experiment all this i came to know and studied in depth uh, when i came to bombay so similarly in uh, political systems also we started studying which whether this representative system or who crosses the milestone first uh, whether that system is a, a proper or a proportional representation should be there all these discussions were going on at that time what i uh, see uh, the contribution of the concept of total revolution is that it uh, initiated lot of discussion on these uh, issues on these systems which are working which were working in india and which had brought uh, to a crisis level uh, when uh, uh, emergency was declared and the dictatorial tendencies of the uh, ruling party and the ruling leader were uh, quite clear at that time and uh, people's protest and people's rights were suppressed uh, even supreme court was subdued at that time so why all this crisis is coming up uh, so that's why alternatives uh, Uh, we started thinking about and lot of people started thinking about hamla chahe jaisa hoga haath hamara nahi uthega can you narrate some of the challenges you may have faced on this at that time and then we will discuss the current challenges uh, because it was not always easy to okay. live by this belief required training that's what uh, we realized that non violence uh, even people when there is lot of structural violence uh, and uh, there is a culture of violence in families in the societies uh, the oppression is also going on and among the uh, poor communities also there is uh, violence just to save their own life and dignity uh, so in that uh, violence comes it becomes a culture of violence in that level uh and uh, patriarchy and all these uh, uh, means are these structures these structures uh, of control uh, structures of power class system caste system all these are uh, creating an, a culture of violence they are the creators uh in that if you want to uh, continue the struggle with or non violent struggle then a training is necessary so this we came across and this experimented when uh, i was working for sangarsh vaini in bombay i was convener of sangarsh vaini and the slum demolition took place uh, in a slum which was uh, known for lot of violence in that slum inter community violence not hindu muslims but different communities from different states who had settled there for their own survival for their own piece of land there was lot of violence and uh, there were a lot of uh, other uh where which we call uh, criminal activities uh, means uh, they were in conflict with law most of the people so all this was going on and uh, slum demolition was illegal without giving notice and the uh, government had ward office had taken all their belongings all their uh, bamboos and uh, shelter uh in the trucks and they were going to take them to the khadi to the uh for dumping it so when we realized that this has happened we were students and we all gathered and uh, mobilized 4000 people from that slum and there the first training had to be that no violence at all otherwise our struggle will go waste that any those lectures had to take this understanding and if even if police comes and wants to arrest some people uh, then women uh, used to surround that person and then police had to go back because there was no violence if the police also and the state authority but non violence they don't know so we gave out the ward office 
and MLA came, uh, other people also came, MLA uh, and local political of, uh, people. Uh, and then a uh, ward officer uh, said, come in and we'll negotiate. So we said, uh, you negotiate with the people, not with us. Uh, and no one will accept tea from anyone, from the MLA's political parties. Uh, and the 4,000 people sat for four hours and trucks had to be taken back. Means the ward office had to take back the trucks and the local people are volunteers local. They distributed each one's like it very honestly. There was no uh, violence. There was no clash, uh, no clash in that slum. So that's where we realized the strength of uh, nonviolence in our struggles. And Amla chahe jaisa hoga, haath hamara nahi uthega. That is what the uh, slogan had to go, has to go to the people. <laughs> Okay. Uh, can you say, before we get to the details of the work that you have been doing now for almost 30 years, uh, was it difficult to walk away from all the privileges that your IIT training would have given you? Because you, you left that mainstream in order to work at the grassroots of Indian society. Uh, was, I, and I, my sense is that this was your response to what you perceived to be structural violence. But uh, was it, uh, you know, in terms that today's young people would maybe relate to, uh, can you say a bit more about how that decision was taken? What did, what was your, if there was any internal struggle on it? There was a struggle is always there for such a decision. Uh, and it was more of uh, family expectations uh, and uh, on one side um, and, uh, uh, and the mission that I was looking for, the mission of uh, uh, total revolution uh, <laughs> that I have to uh, involve myself, I have to not go back to the industry and just earn for myself or my family, but for the uh, for the changing the society. That was the mission that uh, I decided for my life. And struggle in a way was with, started with declaration of emergency. My father was a government doctor. And uh, even after so many years, didn't have a house of our own. Uh, and the letter came that government officers, children, wards should not get involved in political activity. Otherwise they'll have to face the consequences. So my father told me that uh, uh, we'll all be thrown out on the street. So don't uh, go to these meetings. So even uh, then I went to the meetings and to the study camps at uh, that time. So then my father said, uh, now there's no point in saying anything. He'll take his own decisions. Then he realized. <laughs> and uh, that was because uh, later on, actually in some book, he has written that uh, you are realizing my dreams, which I couldn't do in my life. That's what, because he was also a peace activist, a Mohalla committee activist during the partition in, pa in Pakistan. Right. Uh, but uh, he had to uh, bear the burden of the family. Yeah. And because uh, my father was a doctor, my brothers were, uh, they have two elder brothers. So I didn't have any, so much of family responsibility. So the, uh, that is also very difficult. Uh, that economic responsibility. And I chose the course of uh, continuing education. For MTech also, there was a fellowship. For uh, a PhD also, there was a fellowship. So uh, I could sustain myself. So I didn't have to take any money from my parents after I left my job. Right. So that was my satisfaction. So this Where was, was your PhD from? Uh, from uh, UDCT in Bombay, which is now ICT. Nope. In chemical engineering. I did my PhD right. in chemical engineering. Right. Uh, after so from... PhD, then... Uh... Yeah, after PhD? Yeah, after PhD, then I... After PhD, I went into non-profit sector. First worked right. with Foundation for Research in Community Health. Yeah. And that's how uh, it started working. Yeah. And uh, the decision was that uh, uh, I'll start uh, and work in villages. And there were two reasons for that. One was that uh, when uh, in Delhi, once I met JP, the three of us went to meet JP mm. in Delhi, Gandhi Shanti Pratishthan. And later on, I went to meet him in the All India Institute of Medical Sciences also. 
okay, all this movement is going on in cities, but what is happening in the villages? So he said, okay, lakhs of people come to uh, cities to these movements, to these marches, but very few decide to go to the villages and strengthen democracy at the village level or work in the villages. And that was also a time in uh, IIT when I was in MTech where a lot of discussion and uh, on rural technology, how rural areas can be developed, because that was also part of total revolution that these uh, disparities must go. So that thought was also going on. So that's why a decision was made that uh, I will work in rural areas. And that's how eventually Masoom came into being, along with your wife, Manisha Gupta, you founded uh, yeah. What I can you just Manisha tell us about during the Masoom? It's a Mahila Sarvangin Utkarsha Mandal. So it's an integrated uh, development of uh, women. So that's how right. uh, it is. Right. Uh, now, I know that one of the things that uh, drove both of you to start to found this organization was the everyday violence against women. Uh, both of the concepts of patriarchy and how they are put into action. So on that front, can you say in what ways the uh, work of Masoom has been able to uh, if enable women, if not to completely overcome, but to substantially reduce that violence? How did that happen? Manisha also uh, had independently decided, we met, Manisha and I met in the Sangashwaini in Bombay uh, and uh, in the anti-emergency movement and later on in Sangashwaini. And Manisha also had independently decided that we'll work in villages. Uh, her father uh, was a trade unionist uh, and uh, both of us uh, decided to work in non-profit sector and uh, and in Bombay also uh, during Sangarshwaini, we had Mahila Sangarshwaini. And that was that also time when feminist movement was uh, developing in India. And we were also participating in those meetings and those movements. And uh, they're also uh, against violence against women, the people from a war group, uh, women against rape from US, they also came and addressed meetings in Bombay. So a lot of, uh, uh, this discussion and turmoil was going on uh, the growth of feminism in India. Uh, so when we came to uh, work in villages, uh, there also the, we started holding women's meetings uh, because the concept was that women have to be empowered in this patriarchy. Somewhere it uh, push has to be given, uh, it has to be broken uh, and uh, women have to be empowered and uh, to be capable of uh, uh, yeah. It's just to protect their rights and to claim their rights, they should be empowered. So their women had never gone to panchayat. Women uh, used to walk through the village without any slippers or without any footwear. So all those conditions existed there uh, in 1987. So then Manisha uh, and I, we organized, Manisha organized women in a meeting. They said, okay, why not hold this meeting in panchayat uh, building? Is panchayat only for men? Uh, so they said for the first time uh, uh, we are entering a panchayat building. So that was the first time women entered a panchayat building. So all these changes we started seeing. So then uh, uh, the illicit liquor was being uh, consumed and a lot of uh, women connect violence. Um, means uh, intensification of violence uh, to alcoholism. So this, we should stop this uh, illicit liquor in the villages because it's easily available. So there also women got uh, organized and it was all non-violent struggle uh, that the village had to sit together and make a resolution that there'll be no sale of illicit liquor in the village. But it didn't last for long, <laughs> but at least that struggle was there. And that's where uh, that violence was seen. So uh, that's when we started uh, paralegal training and then started the counseling centers and uh, counseling centers in the Taluka headquarters. 
and uh, we saw a lot of uh, indebtedness which resulted in violence women had to work to uh, in the fields of they were compelled because they had taken loans from big uh, land owners so they were compelled to work on those uh, with on the fields of those land owners so that then credit group started then women's health issues were came in there was uh, uh, women are not empowered to speak about their health problems so that empowerment which increases their access to health not just uh, Uh, increasing the health facilities, but uh, the lot of uh, barriers which they have to cross on their own to speak about uh, and to give importance to their health issues. So all the, that's how our um, Asum's different programs uh, started developing. Yeah. You see, uh, today it is <coughs> there is a common impression today, or at least there's a kind of great deal of. Uh, uh, there's a loud claim being made today that uh, non violence is only for extraordinary people uh, of a saintly nature whether it is mahatma gandhi or jp or dalai lama uh, let yet i have a feeling from what you've just said and also from knowing about your work little bit that your work with women is proof that ordinary people are capable of non violence am i wrong or right and If I if if this is so, then can you say more about it? It's a uh, every every can one can have, and uh, women and especially uh, people from oppressed uh, class, oppressed uh, means whether women, uh, those who are th those who face structural violence, either it's patriarchy or the caste system, uh, they have the strength to uh, put up uh, non-violent struggles. and even who have their violence in their own lives they have they can also put up a non violent struggle meaning you have seen evidence of have also this. been involved huh? you have seen evidence uh, many ah uh, we have seen evidence and many different methods have also women have uh, and there is uh, people women also see people see advantage of uh, non violence and uh, uh, normally it is said that uh, uh, there will be lesser violence uh, by women but it's not biological uh, but uh, everyone the strength of non violent struggle is that everyone uh, who is not physically strong who doesn't have arms they can participate in the struggle yeah yeah uh, against uh, alcoholism we have seen that a uh, uh, political person in the uh, village uh, he was an alcoholic and his wife came out and stood with other women in front of the house against alcoholism <laughs> and they protested outside the house of the uh, her own husband right actually that strength it gives to the individual that's the belief in non violence that it gives yeah. makes a person strong yeah so uh, we have seen evidence that it's not for big leaders and we see in india today that uh, at uh, this shahin bag struggle who was the leader or in farmers struggle uh, is the people who are carrying on the struggle for one year it's remarkable it's yeah. not any jp or vinova a leader of that status who is um, who is leading those movements and these uh, uh, struggles uh, since in, uh, in pune also we have seen that in kondwa uh, shahin bag shahin bags came up everywhere in the camp area in uh, yeah. kondwa wherever people were in support uh, the minorities were there who were oppressed who were suffering and who could see that they would suffer uh, from ca and uh, the citizenship acts so they came out and uh, protested so it gives strength to ordinary citizens ordinary people yeah but at the same time uh, if we go by the everyday news uh, or whatever is counted as news Uh, there is a feeling uh, i think widespread feeling now that things have life has become more violent that uh, you know we are seeing cases of lynchings uh, where not only the crime is committed but the perpetrators themselves record it on video and then uh, circulate it as though they are proud of uh, their act of violence uh, so but i'm 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 uncertain about whether this means that the society as a whole has become more violent or uh, that these are intense 
random incidents uh, but that the fabric of the society itself is still holding together what is your feeling i mean are we being overwhelmed by specific incidents or is there a overall a kind of uh, shall we say glamorization of violence among ordinary people violence results from uh, one that hate and uh, second if you uh, see the other person as a subhuman or uh, not worth living or is uh, somewhere who is below and who is taking uh, the space extra space so that sort of disgust or uh, 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 when you see the other person as subhuman so that's where violence comes and uh, that we have seen throughout the world that in belgium belgian belgian king had uh, kept uh, congolese in the zoo in uh, in the city in belgium so all this and the uh, all the lynching of uh, black people in us uh, where mayor and uh, on honor honorable honored citizens of the city they get together and a person is tied to the tree and nose is cut off ears are cut off and they are presented to these uh, rich people these uh, whites uh, mayor and other officials in uh, in the plates as uh, mementos and the crime of that person was that uh, woman of the house uh, in that rich family in that white family felt threatened the way he looked up means a, a black person can't look up and the woman felt threatened and that is the punishment that he was tied to the tree and then later on uh, grass was collected and he was burnt alive and if anyone and the threat was given that if anyone helps him or rescues him uh, that person will feel, uh, feel uh, will get the same fate so same sort of hate and when you think that other persons have no right to live on this land and is also or if they want to live they should live as secondary citizens and not as human beings equal to us uh, when you consider that then the violence grows and that's why these are the uh, manifestation of uh, this hate and this uh, feeling that hindus are superior or uh, upper castes are superior these people who are dalits they have uh, uh, no wisdom or women are women have no wisdom and uh, the the superior the hierarchy and the feeling of superiority uh and the other person is considered subhuman and the hate for that person and uh, that results in these uh, incidents but it's not uh, that the whole society has become violent these are because these get the news but the society is living for example uh, uh, there are a large number of villages we see in villages hindus are muslims and other dalits dalit uh, is a is a long social problems um but they are living peacefully somehow they have adjusted so they are not equal um uh, but uh, uh there is structural violence but that is not that everywhere people are being lynched but it's the hate and that is being spread by the government and uh, by the people in power and uh, uh, second thing is that if a peaceful protest and rights of the people and demands of the people are not listened to by the government uh then uh then some violence is been uh, what is the react uh, re- in reaction of that uh, structural violence can come up and it has come up what happened in uh, the next light movement and which areas or which uh, places it has come up and those areas are poor those year land reforms were not implemented in bihar in uh, uh, west bengal for a long time and uh, all that resulted in in up also eastern up the land reforms were not implemented i have heard uh, uh, uh joshi saying that when karpuri thakur was president uh, was uh, chief minister of bihar so uh, sn joshi said uh, he told karpuri thakur that implement land reforms complete land records um because uh, what will happen you will be killed what else can happen you will be killed but at least uh, do that but uh, karpuri thakur kun do that and that's why this bhumi sena and we sena bhumi not bhumi sena and we sena and other senas and violence and in some areas of jharkhand and bengal the movement started 
Now this Kashmir operation in Kashmir and reactive oil uh, incidents can come up and some people can lose uh, uh, faith in nonviolent struggle. Uh, that can happen. Even during emergency, one person from uh, Eastern UP or some UP, part of UP, he came to my hostel. I don't know where did he get my name, but he came to me and said, Ke, uh, you convince me that nonviolent struggle will finish, uh, will uh, bring an end to emergency. Otherwise, you also join me if you can't convince me. So his option was that uh, uh, we'll go and kill every uh, Congress leader in every district. That was his way of uh, ending emergency. <laughs> so this, that no one will dare to become uh, president of Congress party in any in districts of India. So that was his path. So some people in frustration and in protest and in anger if anger grows that much and they lose their path and uh, they can't decide uh, how the struggle has to be continued and uh, they don't have faith in non-violent struggle, so then they can uh, go into this path. Hmm. But if we were to look introspectively, uh, what now going forward is the challenge before all of us who are in favor of non-violence? You know, what are... What should we be doing that we are not doing at the moment on a large enough scale? And the biggest challenge that I see is that people should not lose faith in nonviolent struggles. And fear. Fear is one thing. Because if uh, uh, people get afraid of an oppressive regime, uh, then they can't fight. Uh, then they even uh, non, uh, it gets difficult to uh, carry on the struggle yeah. because then they'll accept everything that comes and self surveillance and all these things come, which came uh, comes to some people. And also, the first uh, requirement of nonviolence is fearlessness. Yes, yeah, is fearlessness. That's what uh, Atma Gandhi used to say. That's what the okay, if you are afraid. If you don't shed your fear, you can't be in the forefront. Uh, and uh, I remember uh, when there was a protest movement on 2nd October, not a protest movement, a peace prayer prayer meeting was there in Rajghat. And J.B. Griplani and, uh, was there. And many other people were there, including Rajmohan Gandhi and many other Gandhians were there on Rajghat. And just uh, about 30 people were there. And... Uh, um, there, the duty assigned to me as a young person was that to uh, sit next to J.B. Kriplani ji and also note down what he says. I sat next to J.B. Kriplani, Kriplani ji and uh, the first sentence he said, Ke, uh, be fearless, nirbhay bano. That was the first sentence. So the, just speak that one sentence. And the police came with the uh, lattes, with sticks, and with uh, in the Rajghat, about 20 of them. And then uh, all of us said, uh, the people also said, that, how do you come into Rajghat with sticks? It's a nonviolent prayer meeting, and how can you come? So the police went back, and they dropped their sticks and came back, and that they have to arrest. So those who are ready to ar be arrested uh, in one group, and those who don't want to be arrested in one group. So J.B. Kriplani uh, went to the Samadhi. So I followed him. I accompanied him. Then he sat down there and put his head on the Samadhi. Yeah. Yeah, and said, Ke, uh, uh, did we fight for freedom struggle for this? Yeah. So that's it. Uh, means people, uh, uh, in spite of all this, whatever is going on, uh, we have to continue our struggle and we should not be afraid and that lot of inner strength is required and nonviolent struggle also gives that inner strength. Yeah. And so both are uh, both help each other to grow. This uh, moment at Rajghat would have been in 1975? 
Yeah, October. So yeah, June it was declared seventy four. So yeah, maybe yeah. seventy four itself. Seventy four itself. Yeah, probably. Now uh, seventy. When was it? Uh, emergency, emergency was declared, was declared in seventy five. Ah, seventy five. So seventy five October. Yeah, twenty third June was declared. Yeah. So twenty yeah. seventy five October. Mm. In closing, आपने जो एंड में बात कही दैट इज वेरी मच द क्रक्स ऑफ द मैटर हाउ टू बिल्ड इनर स्ट्रेंथ सो फ्रॉम दिस वास्ट एंड वेरी रिच बेस ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस दैट यू हैव वॉट सम टिप सम आइडियाज दैट यू कैन शेयर विद यंग पीपल हु वॉन्ट टू वॉक दिस पाथ आई थिंक हु आर ऑल्सो आई मीट अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल हु कैन सी यंग पीपल हु आर सींग दैट द स्ट्रगल इज वेरी लॉन्ग टर्म and i'm very glad to see that many young people are not just preoccupied with you know which party is better or which party is worse they are concerned about the fundamentals that are now at endangered right to life right to dignity uh basically the essential dream that is behind we the people so uh what advice kahe ya you know what some of the what is out of all this richness what can you share with them that will help them to cultivate the inner energy the inner strength that is needed for this long term struggle okay so rightly said that today constitutional values are under threat and the whole concept of india is under threat and that young people are realizing and we see uh, that amongst young people that there is lot of unrest there is since there are not all the young people but there are different young people uh, one group is uh, with the political parties and they see uh, hope in the politi- just to uh, get they, they hope to get gains by being in the political party in political parties also there are some sincere people but among general students who are uh, young people who are not attached to any party we see that there is unrest about this uh, constitutional values uh, loss of values in this uh, the whole the way it is going and uh, that's why there are many groups which have started uh, uh, campaigns on constitutional values education on campaign uh, in pune one person our uh, friend of ours has written a small booklet on constitutional values and that has uh, in uh, now i think it's a fourth uh, uh, a fourth uh, out of the fourth uh, edition uh, of, uh, this edition that is now in circulation and it's very popular so in every t- and lot of people actually in different groups independent groups are now holding camps on constitutional values many schools uh, people are going and uh, talking to students about constitutional values that all these values have to be uh, uh, maintained and it should go into the uh, with the people and only people can then hold these values if these values are held by the people the state cannot do anything even if the state gets violent or any anyway so the message to young people is that one that don't lose hope and be fearless and satyagrahi ki again the last that the satyagrahi ki kabhi haar nahi hoti uh, that will give uh, internal strength to continue the struggle and continue the fight uh-huh. yeah do you know but it's also maybe sometimes uh, we need to remember that life is not just made up of isolated moments that sometimes hard to remember because uh, there is you know certain there are certain days or uh, certain specific incidents that uh, for a moment can make you feel defeated not defeated in a total sense but dejected you know you feel really down and you wonder ki abhi iska kya karenge uh but that moment is not all of life is that a factor yeah, also yeah. Yeah, it's true because in uh, struggle there are many moments uh, many such uh, uh moments come when you feel ki oh what happened but one should carry on uh once uh, we felt very strongly as young people uh, about the assam issue and uh, asu movement was going on yes uh, so yes. that that time the disparities the problems of assam people we carried out a ca- campaign in bombay 
outside uh, church gate outside vt and different places in bombay and some more than uh, 700 people signed on the uh, on the board and then we decided to take out a protest uh, to the government made a memorandum in support of uh, these demands that uh, there should be justice with the people of assam uh, and five people turned up <laughs> only five people in azad maidan turned up yeah so uh, so that is the moment when a test of uh, uh, this non violent struggle and uh, faith in or yeah. Uh, comes up. So with five persons and with 40 police people, 20 uh, women police, we uh, took a march to the uh, Vidhan Bhavan <laughs> and Kala Goda and, uh, ad and also addressed the issues, means talked about the issues uh, to the police who were listening. Yeah. But that, that's how it has to, it should not uh, dishearten us yeah. Uh, but it uh, makes it realistic that that's how it is in uh, Bombay. There can't be support from the, uh, for Northeast issues. Yeah. But some friends of ours uh, who were with uh, in that um, part, in that uh, one went to Assam, did a PhD in uh, in Assam, and then settled in Assam, became an MLA in Assam, and wow. all that. and. Another person, she went to Northeast and her focus on Northeast uh, started means even before that she was interested. But the whole life she has been bringing out books and other things on the Northeastern issues, which was totally neglected at that time. So struggle never goes based, it ignites some, uh, something somewhere. So that should give the strength, you never give up. Bahut, bahut shukriya. Thank you so much. God bless you. It was nice talking to you. Yeah. Thank you.